And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for a Fiora Vi deck. We got an, another donation deck to play here. So this is kind of like the Bannerman deck that was popular for a little bit, but much more on the spell side and the challenger side, really focusing on those two things. So you, as you can see, no no Bannerman. We're going 19 spells to go along with our 21 units. So you know, like we're gonna be doing a whole lot of combat tricks in here, trying to really own combat, how we can uh, tell our opponent um, who's blocking because uh, we have all sorts of challenger units. Vi, Swiftwing Lancer, Laurent Protégé, Fiora, um, even Fleet Feather Tracker. So all those things have challenger, and then we got all sorts of protections. You know, we have our Radiant Strikes, um, Prismatic Barrier, uh, um, and uh, uh, this new card here, Rising Spell Force. This is this was, uh, this was one I wanted to talk about. So three mana, give an ally plus four, plus zero, and quick attack, which is amazing when you are challenging. Because not only do you get the quick attacks, so you're your unit gets to stay alive, but it also lets you trade up. You know, you can use that on like a Fleet Feather Tracker and you can take out a Scythria, a six mana Scythria, <laughs> like Fleet Feather Tracker can, getting the plus four, plus zero and a quick attack. Um, and then of course we have Repost. Also, that was the other, that was, I missed that one, but yeah, another protection spell. All right, then we got some good removal. We have single combat. Concerted Strike, which I think Concerted Strike is an underrated card, by the way, but we got those for, for removal. And then a couple of Judgments at the top end that if our opponents are going wide can uh, be devastating. And especially with Fiora, you can just win games with Fiora and Judgment. Of course, you have to just uh, kind of sprinkle on an Unyielding Spirit. You know, just gotta, gotta add that little, you know, extra pinch of salt. You know, that's your, that's your Unyielding Spirit. Just gotta be in here because it's a great card and it just wouldn't wouldn't taste right without it. So uh, that's our deck. We're going to be go, going in and playing uh, five games over here in ranked like we always do. Um, and yeah, that, that is true. The repose or uh, the spell force basically levels up Vi on its own, <laughs> you know, giving plus four for Vi plus the extra one for the spell. So you're getting like, you know, you're, you're just leveling that up. All right, I'm going to mulligan the two spells because we do have 19 spells in this deck. So we just want to make sure we find our units. We'll draw spells um, and we'll be all good. I'll keep Vi in hand. It's, a, it's, you know, our best turn five play and it's good to have in hand so we can just get the bonuses. Yeah, that is the card I'm always mentioning that people are sleeping on. Concerted Strike, they are. And spice. See? We got our spice. Let's go along with our. You know, War Chef's bringing the spice. Unyielding Spirit is that little extra spice. All right, so War Chef's Vulnerable is annoying. Hired Gun, it's a pretty good card. Hired Gun's pretty decent. So they go Misfortune. So I can, hmm. Like I can Bright Steel Protector and give this barrier, but it doesn't matter because the Misfortune trigger will do the one damage and remove the barrier. So that doesn't really help. We could do, hmm, yeah. So, I guess the War Chefs is just dead. Can't really stop that from happening. So we'll, we'll spend the three mana this turn on the Fiora. Where next turn I can give Fiora a barrier and still have the two mana for a single combat in case that is needed. I 
I don't know. I long for a worthy opponent. There's... You know, depending on what my opponent has, like, there's just a lot of different things that, like, maybe that'd be good to trade off Flea Feather Tracker or Bright Seal Protector, but then also maybe not. Okay. That was one where I should have traded it off. I don't want them to challenge my Fiora and get the Misfortune trigger on the Fiora. So we're just going to go ahead and fight right away. Level up Fiora. Sure. Alright, so the, they'll trade their 4-drop for Fiora. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I'm standing up right now. Love ya. Sometimes I sit down. Recently, I've been standing up a lot, and that's that's something I've been trying to do. It's just just like a, a health conscious thing of just trying, to, so I'm not just sitting down. Um. all the time because usually when I'm not streaming I'm you know sitting down so just kind of like a, a health conscious thing and uh, standing up and I also feel like when I'm standing up I'm uh, kind of talking a little bit more you know like whenever you're sitting down you kind of get a little bit more lethargic and so I feel like I'm being a better streamer standing up also but yeah I have like the moving desk that can sit go up or down um so we could level up our Vi with the Radiant Strike. Something we could do. It is annoying. It is, it is. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely been playing. Yeah, I've definitely played decks with Subversible in it. I like that card. I like that card. Um, Dangerous water. Um, I don't know when. Like, yeah, I don't know when. Like, the last one was that we played that card. I gotta show you the sights of Billswater. The sights are fine. The smells, on the other hand. Probably this deck had it. Dang. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know, like that, that Catastrophe deck, I know definitely had it. I know we've played it in other decks too, though. Uh, all right. This is this is gonna be problematic. We may just lose here this turn. If I would have, I should have just gone straight to challenging that misfortune. I really got punished for playing the Swiftwing Lancer first. This is the, this is the one time where rising where we, rising spell force we wish it was a different spell because we need something on defense. They get to level up Misfortune now. What do you see, boy? That could have been better. There's plenty of killing. So can I survive? Yeah, because I'm at 11, 4, 7, 10. Oh, I'm taking 10. Yeah. 
Yeah, down to one. can't block the 2-1. Or, oh, I guess, yeah, I could block the 2-1 over the 2-4. Yeah, 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 never mind, never mind. Okay, yeah. Um. Sorry, I was just thinking about future turn. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, this works. Okay. Then we're just gonna have to use this, because we need to get that out of here. Oh, right. Right, that doesn't even, yeah, never mind. That doesn't even do anything. Right. Neither of those do anything. Dang it. It does all that damage all that time. Never mind. Yeah. This this was lost because I didn't challenge immediately on turn five. I played or turn six. I played the Swift Wing Lancer first. Um Like we could draw judgment, but the judgment I still die because of this thing. Like even if we draw judgment, I still die. I've got your back. <sighs> that bright steel protector. Oh, that's right. Okay, man. I, I. Yeah. See, I thought I thought they would be taking three, but that's right. It was three times one. It was it was one damage three times. So the Vi would not have taken any of that damage. So the Vi could have blocked the two one. Um. Yeah. So the Vi could have blocked the two one. If only this wasn't strike a unit while attacking. What if this was just strike a unit, do five damage? What if we would have just dealt like all that damage to them? Yeah, the judgment was the perfect. Yeah, it was three, three, ah, one damage three times. So I should have blocked the Vi. Yeah, so like that that cost us that game not blocking with the vine. So I did I did two things wrong. That that one was definitely wrong, but then the first one. Um The first one I thought it was it was good to play the 5-4 before combat. It just ended up not being good to do that. Yeah, that, that's what makes this game really good, is that you can trace your play mistakes to a loss. Yep. Um, that's That really shows that uh, that you have a good game, that it's not just... Um, you know, it's, it's not like luck. I can just be like, oh, I got unlucky. No, I, I made a couple of decisions that cost, cost me that game. You're awesome against Monkey Idol. So I think they want to probably play like make it rain. Um such unrefined style. Or something like that. If they do like if they have like a parlay here that would have killed the Fiora, it's okay. My shield is yours. 
think getting that free kill is really nice. No, other way. Sorry. Pump that up. Heal Fiora one. Yeah, exactly. We'd still die to the parlay because of the bomb. The powder keg. I get to drain too. Too easy. And we got to block that 2-2 for free, and Fiora's already back to a three health. And that Vile Feast just put a a 1-1 one -one into play. You don't want crappy 1-1s one -ones against Fiora. Playing Vile Feast may have just hurt them. My best draw is at this point is like single combat or concerted strike. I mean, I guess. Unyielding Spirit is game over. Also. You're covered. My shield is yours. I never hold oh up. Really? I can just kill this thing? Alright. Rising Spell Force. I mean, I could play it on the Vi and level up Vi. And then just go Radiant Strike. I guess I could still do Repost and level up Vi with Repost. I don't really need a level up Vi. So I did play the protege in case they just randomly have, you know, in case they just, uh, I guess they couldn't even pl play ruination. Never mind. I was thinking like maybe they'd randomly have like a ruination. They didn't have the mana for it anyway. Strike without worry. Radiant Strike. GG's. Alright, got that Fiora kill. Get the sweet Fiora animation. Mine stands for victory. Okay. One and one. And could have got the first one. Yeah, we gotta get that. Oh, this this could be, you know, Callista deck, you know, could be going wide. Maybe we can get that Fiora Judgment one turn kill. Let's mulligan away a protege. 
And maybe the barrier also. I'll keep a protege of combat. Let's see if we find like our champions. Tracker's fine. Tracker just trades with. Trades with something. Glad they didn't have hapless aristocrat. That would have been sad. But they could have like make it rain. Which would also be sad. Um I don't know, do I rain strike? I guess. I think so. It's a good two drop. Higher gun getting a two for one. That's that's pretty nice having a two drop that gets a two for one for you. Strength and grace, beauty and the That's always good. Um beat a 4-4. Four four. I think we'll be okay against a 4-4. Four four. He said not so confidently. Okay, no vile feast. I have no equal. Awesome. One girl wrecking crew. GG. Alright, Fiora Vi. Getting that win. Two and one. Got our, um, got our revenge on Shadow Isles with that win. Okay, two and one. I could see there. I could see with this deck playing two unyielding spirits. Unyielding spirit does seem just amazing in this deck. I could see playing a second. And it would probably be over a rising spell force, honestly. Maybe you don't need three of that card because you can't use it on defense. Lancer is good, but a little expensive. This is the um, this is a real aggressive deck. A lot of elusives. I would have liked to have Fleet Feather Tracker. I'd also like to have Fiora. Hey, Krabby. That's my resting face. Flavor and spice. They'll never see a mm, A delicious challenge. Hop. The chefs are eat, eating the eating the food, eating some spiders. Just ate that spider up. Strength and grace, beauty in the blade. Beauty in the blade. Protégé is the safer card to play. The 
Like if I do it, if I do it the other way, right? The two one absolutely blocks warshafts, right? Like that's that's just an auto block. If I go this route. But this would be Greenglade duo out of here, which is pretty important. Yeah, it's this way. This way means it's going to be more difficult for... Okay, well, they have that too. They didn't block? Why would they not block? The only reason not to block is... I don't know, they have... Navori Conspirator, they want to have pick that up? I don't know, that's not a great reason. Um She can. She's not impressed. I I'm still surprised they didn't trade. So a two four blocks Z just as well. And so basically, if I if I use Bright Steel Protector, they don't attack. If I, I think if I play the 2-4, they don't attack either. Where I can uh, use the play the 2-4 there, save the Bright Steel Protector for this turn for like whenever Fior is actually doing damage. And so, ooh, I was gonna say I'll be surprised if they actually develop more. They go in transfusion. Drive quickly, run. Honor guide me. Can't fight on an empty stomach. Going transfusion here. Discipline of force. Well, they're gonna have discipline of force. Uh, fortitude. Never mind. Dis discipline of fortitude will have the rising spell force. G G. And some quick games here. That <laughs> rising spell force. <laughs> My opponent saw their Zed die to a rising spell force and they were like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> but yeah, it's really like, L Lara Protege is awesome against small creature decks for sure. Four health. Challenge those small creatures. Looks like we're playing another small creature deck. Um, we got some odd ones. Yeah, we definitely have some odd ones here. Just can't even draw a war chefs, can we? Ah, we can. We can. That makes his hand a lot better. Made this a lot worse. Went quick. 
quickly from making this a lot better to making this a lot worse. That ravenous butcher. It's a good turn. Turn three putting 12 power into play. It's a good turn. Judgment. Need more mana. So Callista will turn into a 6-5, so this still trades. And then we can do trade, trade. So that should all just basically trade. We go down to seven. Hey, Bitta B. Is that how I pronounce that? Bitta B, DK. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Hmm, Silverwing Vanguard, eh? It's not a bad card to have. It's not a bad card to have. What do I want to do this turn? I just want to play Vine. Mm -hmm. I really wish I could double spell with these though. Like that's kind of the problem is six mana when you have five, five, three, four doesn't add up too well. One girl wrecking crew. That's our fourth sub of the day. Only one more. You can see the Demastian border from here. Did that sub goal. All right, let's challenge this Mistwraith. And the, the thing about Vi, why? Uh, I guess they didn't want me to challenge Bark Beast. The thing about Vi is, you know, like, we couldn't even hold up Repost, so I had to... Um, we'll see. I don't think we need Judgment. really cool to you know have a leveled up Vi be able to attack with a whole bunch of stuff they block with a whole bunch of stuff and you judgment level up like you're leveled up Vi while you're attacking and just mow down their nexus that would be a really cool uh, thing to try to set up Come on. You know, like it's that's not gonna happen that often, but that will happen in a non-zero amount of games. Like that will happen. Okay, so we're down to one life. Well, this game's not over. We're down to one. Hopefully we can do 15 with Vi and Lancer. 
They just drew any, like, one unit they lose. They just drew a unit they lose. There we go, GG's. All right, so pretty nice 4-1 with this donation deck. And could have been a 5-0. We did top deck the Lucky Judgment to actually <laughs> could have been the 5-0. Um, if I would have just blocked with Vi, I, I just, you know, I had, I, uh, had the little brain fart there against Misfortune. I was thinking Misfortune does three damage and I couldn't block with my Vi and, and have it die with that three damage, but it does one, three times. I wouldn't actually do any damage to the Vi, so I should have blocked with Vi. Could have stayed alive. Um, so that cost us the first game. Uh, but yeah, pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's nice having all of these combat tricks with this kind of deck, you know, it's not, it's, you know, not focused as much on just like overrunning the opponent. Cause if you, if you do just kind of focus on overrunning the opponent, you know, maybe they have other things that kind of stop you. This is, this felt really good in like a small unit metagame. And there was, you know, we played against a lot of small units. And so our protégés and our, uh, Fioras and protégés were, uh, pretty big and then you know Lancer and Vi were huge we could just keep protecting everything um, it was nice but yeah Unyielding Spirit does seem like a card that's just amazing in this deck and I, I kind of wouldn't mind a second Unyielding Spirit and it would probably have to be for a Spell Force or a Repost like one of these two um, or a Radiant Strike I guess it'd probably be one of one of those nine cards Repost, Spell Force or Radiant Strike for a second Unyielding Spirit. So Unyielding Spirit is pretty awesome. And it would probably be the Spell Force as we talked about. You can't you can't use Spell Force on defense. So it is is it it is a one dimensional card. Um but it's a it's a good one. And you know, like I was I was happy with it. I liked it. I mean, still playing two of the card, you know, like it's not a big difference playing two or playing three of a spell like that. Like it's not it's not as big of a difference. Like the difference between playing one and two is more than two and three and so on. Just the, the more copies that you play, uh, you know, they have, um, you know, it's not as big of a difference as cutting one. So that's one like small change I would kind of recommend. Um, okay, so you, you were worried about playing the second Unyielding Spirit because there was so much Ionia and Deep when you were playing. Gotcha. I haven't seen as much Ionia around, but yeah, it's, it's it's a card you don't really want against Ionia, but you're still looking at only two out of 40. And it's so good against everything else that's not Ionia. <laughs> it's it's kind of worth it. And even, even the deep decks, I have definitely won my sh fair share of games with Unyielding Spirit against deep. Especially how big those those things can be, like having a, an Unyielding Spirit on a Vi can be nice, but I know they do have a couple of options to get rid of it with, um, you know, like they do, you know, they, they have a couple of answers, you know, like whether they have like a Nautilus in play and then turn on a, a Riptide afterwards, or of course the more common one, Devour of the Depths. But it's such a good card. I would, I would recommend playing it a second. But yeah, that was, that was pretty awesome. Fiora Vi. Um, and and if you you know if you try out a second and if it if it if it is a little clunky and, and kind of unnecessary then you know go back to the spell force you know you can go you can you can go back but I think I would uh, play a second there yeah so gamma good deck here good deck uh, four one real close to that five zero we had two four ones today that were both super close to five zeros. Um, and then our other two decks were, were really good too. This was just a, a good a good day. We really did uh, did well today. All right, so that's it for Fiora Vi. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and uh, feel free to yeah, real fast games for sure. Um, you know, feel free to leave those comments. You know, let, let me know what you think of the deck and all that kind of stuff. Always like seeing those. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you for the next video.